Welcome to NCS Extra Credit video series. I'm Robert Clark, Executive Account Representative here at NCS. NCS Extra Credit is, is designed to be a short, informative video given by NCS staff members per, uh, pertaining to the credit world, particularly in the areas of mechanics lien law, UCCs, and collections. Today we are going to be speaking with Jerry Bailey, Executive Sales and Education Services Manager. Thank you for joining me today, Jerry. Not a problem, Robert. Thanks for having me. Today we're going to focus on landlord waiver agreements. Uh, we have come across some situations lately where the debtor does not own their place of business, where they're leasing and they've decided not to pay a few months of their rent. The end result is, is that the landlord locks the place up and liquidates the inventory. So what do we recommend for creditors to prevent this? We have run into a few of these lately. Uh, well, the first thing would be try and determine if your customer owns their place of business, their building. So we would recommend that they would be asking these questions up front, maybe through, the credit, the, through their credit application. Yeah, that's a good place. Try and capture in the credit application. And then if they indicate that they do not own that place of business, then the next step would be to get a landlord waiver agreement signed. And the main reason is because the states give common law liens to landlords. And in most cases, the landlords don't need to do anything to perfect these liens. Now, they're state laws, so of course they vary from state to state. In some states, the landlords actually have to bring an action through the courts to create the lien. But by and large, the landlords don't need to do anything to perfect these liens. And in some cases, they can trump secured interests. Um, you know, the effective date of this landlord lien can go back to the commencement of the lease. So what came first, the, the lease or the secured interest? That could be a point of contention. So, and again, they're, they're state laws. So like the mechanics lien statutes, the landlords have time frames where they have to react when they've been unpaid or they lose that right. So that varies from state to state. And then normally there's some sort of notification process that goes on where the landlord's going to do a search, find all the people who filed UCCs and send a notification out to those people. And this is where we've seen some issues too because sometimes creditors get these notifications and they don't always respond when they need to. So the moral there is, if you get one of these notifications, make sure you respond. So what does the landlord waiver agreement need to contain? What type of verbiage? Um, well, it's, it's a document that basically says that the collateral is the personal property of the creditor, not the landlord, that the landlord consents that this collateral is gonna be kept on the premises, and that the landlord waives any right of lien or claim against the collateral. Um, it should also describe the collateral, describe the goods, and then, of course, the landlord's going to sign it. It's a legal document, so you'd want your attorney to draw one up for you. If you would like an example, we have an example of one that we'll gladly send out to you. But again, we urge you, have your attorney take a look at it and make sure that they're, they're comfortable with it. Great. Um, our passion here at NCS is to make sure that our clients are educated on secured transactions. So they can make that decision up front when to elevate their status to that of a secured creditor. How do you see, uh, or how do UCCs help in this situation? Oh, a couple different ways. Um, first of all, you can make a pretty strong case that a purchase money security interest trumps the landlord lien, A. B, even if you only do a blanket filing, at least you have a public record out there of your lien. And now when the landlord does their search, you're going to show up on that search and you're gonna get one of these notifications and you can respond accordingly. But really to us, um, you know, don't take any chances. Get your UCC in place, file your financing statement, and if your customer doesn't own their place of business, get a landlord waiver agreement signed. Great. Uh, the takeaway from this session is, is to make sure that you put a policy or process together that will help you identify when your customer is leasing or renting a building. Uh, we recommend that you ask this question up front through your credit application. If they are leasing, then we recommend that you get the landlord to sign off on the landlord waiver agreement. By signing off on that waiver agreement, the landlord is waiving their right to file a lien on any of the collateral that might be at that building. Uh, this concludes this installment of NCS Extra Credit. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we greatly appreciate your input and would love to hear from you or for you to send any suggestions to us. Please use the contact information uh, below by sending us an email or giving us a call or send us a comment through our various social media outlets. Uh, for Jerry and myself, thank you and have a great day. Thanks everyone.